As I mentioned in my last video, I learned a lot from the experience of shooting on 16mm film with a Bolex camera when I was in film school. And here I wanted to talk a little bit about just what I learned and why I learned from that experience. So I'll say first that uh, when I first used the, the uh, format, the 16mm format and the Bolex camera, it was in the Film One class that I took in film school, which was sort of the, uh, it wasn't exactly an introductory course to film, but it was, it was the first, sort of the first tier of the film um, production, and, you know, the kind of intensive film production classes that we took. And I think like a lot of people my age, I mean, my first experiences making my own films were really, of course, videos that I shot on a camcorder. And what was interesting about shooting on the Bolex was that for the first time, I was forced to work without the elements of sound and color. Now, I had already, I had always taken those for granted because from the time that I first picked up a camcorder at the age of nine and made my first little movie in 1993, uh, I had always had sound and color. It was built into the video system. So I always took it for granted. Those were just elements that I always worked with. And I made probably... 40 short films and several, what, three or four feature film uh, projects on video before coming to film school. So when I got to film school and we were using the Bolex, that was, that was a, a real change for me, uh, having to, sort of being forced to, to work without those elements of sound and color. Now, the result of that, of, of kind of being deprived of those elements, was that it forced me to think a lot more closely and a lot more carefully about what those elements bring to the, to a film and how to how to use them creatively, how to use them expressively. So in that sense, it was kind of through that limitation that the experience taught me uh, more about how, how to use elements that I had been taking for granted for years at that point. Now, I'm a big silent comedy fan. You know, Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, those are the films that really got me thinking seriously about film as an art form at a pretty young age. So what I liked when I, when I looked at the Bolex, we were shooting on, um, you know, black and white, uh, the reversal film, and of course it was silent, there was no soundtrack, no recorded soundtrack or anything. So I looked at it as an opportunity to make a silent comedy style movie. And I made a film called The Wrong House, which uh, you can see on my YouTube channel. I'll put the link in the description below. And it's, it's very much like a throwback to a kind of, uh, you know, a slapstick, uh, too real comedy from, from the 1920s or whatever. And what I wanted to do, what, what the Bolex allowed me to do, was to shoot at a different speed. So unlike video, which is always 30 frames per second, with the Bolex, I could shoot at 16 frames per second. And then when that was transferred to video, uh, you know, whether you, play, you know, project the film back at 24 frames per second or when it's transferred to video, it gives it that slightly faster than life speed, you know, that kind of quicker pace, that sort of extra little kick to the action that you get with silent comedy. And that was very much by design. So I love the fact that I could actually shoot a film that, that way, just as, as you know, people like Chaplin or Keaton would have uh, in, the, in the silent era. So the Bolex had some unique technical um, uh, properties to it. You know, shooting that way had some unique technical uh, opportunities that I was able to take advantage of. Uh, the Wrong House, I, I, I still think in some ways of that as, as like a real turning point for me in making a movie because one of the things that shooting on film requires you to do is to very carefully uh, plan every single shot out. Now, I'm certain that many people already do this with video, even if you've never shot on film. I know there's a lot of filmmakers out there who plan very carefully, who storyboard or what, you know, however you do it. But... Um, for me, thinking in those terms, because mainly because of the, the cost required by shooting on film, uh, when, I, when, I, when I did so, when I, when I did shoot on film, I found that I had to be a lot more careful of, in my planning, a lot more deliberate in getting exactly the shots that I needed. 
And the assignment that I was given to direct, the, 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 cause, because it, in the way the class was set up, there were several different assignments, and we worked in a little group, and some of us, you know, we would direct uh, one of the assignments and, then, and, and help the, that person direct that assignment, and another one of us would direct another assignment and get help from the rest of our classmates and so on. So the one that I was uh, directing was to make a film using the classical continuity style of editing. Now this necessitated, of course, getting all your different types of shots, you know, close shot, medium shot, wide shot, you know, pretty standard kind of film school exercise. But what I found was that by, by taking that level of planning, it really forced me to, uh, to, to, to break the film down in much greater detail than I would have if I had been shooting on video. And part of the way that I actually did that was by bringing video into the project. Now, what I mean is that uh, because I recognize that I have to be very precise about getting, you know, the shots that I need and, and not, uh, you know, I only had a limited amount of film that I could afford to buy, so I knew I had to get it, I really had to get it right. So what I did was I actually sh initially shot my ideas for the film on video. I took my mini DV camcorder and shot a kind of rough draft of the film, if you will, using mini DV. And then I used that as my guide in knowing exactly what shots I needed to get, how long the shots would be, uh, how I would have to light them, you know, all of these things that you have to think about when you're shooting on film. So in that sense, I was able to bring video into the project as a way of doing a kind of rough draft, and it really helped me in planning for the final project, which thankfully came off without a hitch. Now, I had run into a, a problem on an earlier project that I shot for this class, and uh, in which the uh, gate in the camera had not been closed, and it was my fault for not checking it, but uh, the gate had not been closed properly, and so I shot a, it was, it was an entire roll of film, it was shot, and came, uh, you know, came back, processed from the lab, transferred to video. At this point, you know, I've already spent probably at least a couple hundred dollars going through all these stages of the process. And when I got the, the footage back on the mini DV tape, it was played and, you know, the image is just fluttering all around the screen because the film was not, uh, because the gate was not closed properly. So uh, that taught me real quick about how careful you have to be when shooting on film. Something as simple as checking the gate, uh, you know, cost me an entire roll of film and it, I'm sure at least a couple of hundred dollars. So when it came time to shoot The Wrong House, which was sort of my, uh, you know, final project for this particular class, I knew I had to be a, a lot more careful about anything like that happening. Also, it, it, it was uh, because it was right up to the end of the semester, it was almost like a, an imposed deadline of, you know, I, I wouldn't have had time necessarily to reshoot footage if I had forgotten to close the gate or if there was some other problem with the exposures or something, you know, I wouldn't have necessarily had time to go back and retake it, have it processed and edit it, you know, and, and still have it done in, in time. So, you know, shooting on film imposed a lot of, restrictions and a lot of considerations that shooting on video uh, does not. But because of that, you really do learn uh, a lot about the filmmaking process that way. Now, I, I'm not a purist in the sense that I think, you know, everybody should shoot on film. I'm not, I'm not saying anything like that. I, I, I think it can be a good experience if you find yourself in a position where you're more or less required to because of a film school course or if you're just interested in when, you know, have access to a Bolex camera. And I mean, it's very expensive. I have to say, I, I, I will say that I recently purchased, uh, a few years ago, I purchased a refurbished Bolex, which cost me uh, $500 for the camera. And I shot a couple of rolls of film, of, of 16 millimeter uh, color film. And between just the, uh, the cost of the film stock and the the processing, the developing, uh, you know, it, it is very expensive. So I don't recommend doing it casually. I'm, I'm definitely not recommending doing it unless you are, are really interested in it. It would help, I guess, if you have access to a camera or something. Um, 
all that said, you know, if you if you ever do have the experience of shooting on film, you may find it interesting to see how you think differently about it than your experience of shooting on video. Today, of course, we're very fortunate with. Uh, hard drive cameras, and you know, I, and, and here I am shooting on a smartphone with an internal hard drive. We're fortunate that you don't even have the cost of mini DV tape anymore. Now that was always pretty minimal, of course. I mean, mini DV tape wasn't expensive, but it still did force you to think a little bit about, you know, do I have enough tape left for this project? And you know, even if it was just a matter of saying, oh well, I'll have to, you know, run up to the store and buy some more tapes. That was still something, you know, that was still a little little restriction that you had to think about. Now, with a, uh, with a smartphone, for example, you can go out on a shoot and, you know, bring, a, bring a, uh, you know, a laptop along. And if you find yourself running out of hard drive space, you just plug it in, offload the footage, and, you know, you're, you're good to go with, uh, with more space. So there's a you know there's always things that are getting easier and there's there's always aspects of film that are becoming more lightweight, portable, mobile. And as far as I'm concerned these are all great developments. I don't especially want to go back to a uh you know a time of shooting on film. I think there's certainly advantages to it and of course there are filmmakers who uh, use film in in beautiful ways and who are, are still very uh, committed to that format. And that, that's, that's another matter. I mean, I'm, I'm really not talking about using film at that level. I'm really talking about it more in terms of a, a, a learning exercise or a, an, you know, for an introductory film course. I don't know how common that is in film school anymore. I mean, I'd be, I'd be curious to hear from people who uh, you know, graduated from film schools more recently if, that's, if, if the 16 millimeter format is still... Uh, used at least at the introductory level. I imagine there's uh, there's opportunities to shoot on it, maybe in the more advanced classes. But I, I get the sense now that digital video is used um, much more commonly for the, you know the the, uh, the entry level classes. Anyway, I, I could go on, but that's what I learned from shooting on 16 millimeter. And you know what it comes down to is no matter what format you're shooting on. There's, there's always a lot that we can learn just by thinking about all these different elements and thinking about how we use them. It's very easy to take them for granted when they're always there. And when they're taken away, that forces us to think, you know, uh, about what they bring to a project, how we can use them in a unique way, how we can use them in a, an expressive way. And, you know, it's like I say, for me, filmmaking is an ongoing learning experience. Like I said, I picked up a film, uh, a, a, a video camera for the first time at nine years old in 1993 and made my, my first little movie project that year. That was 28 years ago. And as far as I'm concerned, I, I'm, concerned I'm, I'm still learning all the time because the technology changes. Uh, it allows us to do different things, to think about things differently. And, you know, that's part, part of why I decided to start recording these videos is just to share some of my experiences and uh, share ideas and, you know, to help uh, contribute to this community and learn from each other. Anyway, uh, thanks for listening and I'll talk to you later.